for the day. Major parties have put out their manifestos. Who are you voting for in the coming elections? Send us your comments at the agenda underscore SABC. We'd like to look at those later on. But also send us your questions for our guest, uh, the leader of the Democratic Alliance, uh, Mr. Musi Maimani, who would like to welcome right now in the studio. Thank you so much for making the time this morning. Thank you, and um, it's great to be here with you, and greetings to all fellow South Africans. 22.23% of the vote in the last election. Are you feeling emboldened after Saturday? Absolutely. I, I think, first of all, the DIA is the only party that represents all South Africans. We're the party that's standing up saying, we want to look at the future of South Africa. And we're the party that's showing that in government we deliver for all South Africans. Therefore, I'm feeling confident that the future of the party is strong, our growth is there. <laughs> And then we indicate the fact that actually we're the only party that is capable of being able to create work for our citizens. When you are Musi Maimani talking about social cohesion and bringing all South Africans together, mm. and you have a manifesto launch very well attended, but as you look across, there's only black faces. Does that worry you? I think it's a, it's a misreading of the situation. I think more than anything... It definitely is because people will say that the DA voter does not necessarily attend rallies but will vote. But and, no, unpack I think it it's for unfair. us. I think, first of all, if you were to look at the demographics of, of, of the event on Saturday, of course there must be majority black. No one must debate that particular question. But you could see... Uh, white South Africans were there, colored South Africans were there. We don't run a census as people come through the gate to decide which race is coming through. We invite all South Africans. And it doesn't frankly, worry you. I was proud of the fact that there was a diversity of South Africans. And South Africans all over at home were watching, they were covering the event, and were enthused by it. And I, 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 we build a party that says we must reflect all. This weekend I'll be going to KZN, to the various provinces. You will see the wide array of of DA supporters all the way across. I'll be launching the Western Cape Manifesto. There you will see the diversity of South Africans and perhaps there you might have uh, a, a, a bigger representation of different races that are there. We are not here to run a racial census. I'm here to look at the party in general in South Africa and you'll recognize the fact that it represents all South Africans. What stood out for you for on Saturday? Well, I think what was important was that people heard our message. They heard that we wanted to go out there and put a job in every home. It was very encouraging to see the fact that in the leadership of the DA it represents a diverse group of people. I think it was important for us to also demonstrate now a DA that has grown. It stood out for me that now you've got mayors. Before the DA didn't have mayors in different parts and they came out, they put their message on the table. So I think this is a party that is on the up, that is growing and that's why I thought to me Saturday, even myself sitting, as a, sitting in the stands could appreciate and feel a real impression of the fact that this is a party for all South Africans. Are you getting a sense now in terms of uh, what your performance will look like uh, at the polls in May? Yeah, we've, we, we deliberately obviously track where we are at. We're confident about Gauteng. We certainly have bringing out uh, a lot of work here. And uh, obviously we want to govern in the Northern Cape, retain the Western Cape, but also increase our national vote. Uh, I think the vision of the DA moves beyond just um, narrow party politics. The vision of the DA is a vision that says, how do we engage all citizens? How do we show competence in delivery? But also, furthermore, we're the only party that's saying, how do we bring honest policing that can work for citizens? How do we secure our borders? And how do we ensure that ultimately services are delivered faster? We're talking to Musi Maimani on Saturday. His party, the Democratic Alliance, launched the manifesto for change. We asked our viewers to interact with us in this conversation and send us some questions. I think we're going to put some of them up right now. Um, let's see. I'm not getting the right screen. Okay, Khomuto Maklo is saying some people believe that racism still exists. Do you believe that racism still exists in South Africa? If yes, how do you plan to overcome it? Um, some of the elements we touched on at the beginning of the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, look, racism is a function of our history. We come from a painful history of racial divisions between black and white. Today, those elements still exist. It's not that in 1994 we switched off the switch of racism. It still is pervasive in society. The win against racism is not to enhance further racism. Hatred only begets hatred. It doesn't. It, it, it achieves 
that sense. What we've got to do is make sure that we build a reconciled society. We've got to confront racism when it exists. We've got to allow those who sit in the center, those South Africans who say it's better for us to work together, to be quick at condemning it. And I think actually as a society, we've been able to achieve a transition from legalized racism. We are now moving on to addressing social racism. But furthermore, we've got to then get on to the question of economic exclusion of black South Africans. Yeah. Because when we build places of work, places of work must be diverse. We must make sure that industry reflects the interests of our people. And this way we can build society upon which all citizens can prosper. That's the goal. But to address racism, I also want to say it's crucial that all citizens must also be able to stand and be proud of who, who they are. If you are white and you are Afrikaans, you need to be proud of that. If you are black and you are Zulu, you need to be proud of that. What we mustn't be doing is creating a society that just says non-racialism does not mean an identity uh, uh, people being able to identify themselves in whatever race, culture they choose to do. So our constitution gives us the right to self-identify. It's a social challenge that keeps coming up, especially yeah. in terms of DA conversations. And uh, how, how, what is the plan in terms no, I've, of... I've made it crystal clear. If you are racist, don't vote for the DA. We're not interested in that. We're not interested in racists. We're interested in people who say... I want to build a South Africa for all. I want to work with all the people. Yes. Racism is a South African problem. I think it's, it's a miss to suggest that it's unique to a particular party, etc. It was the other day, we're facing in the Equality Court right now as we speak, there's a case of ANC people who are there, there's a case of uh, different parties who are there. The fact of the matter is that just because someone has been systematically excluded from the economy does not mean it, it relegates them from from not being racist. It means that they can be racist. Racism is an attitude of the heart that seeks to hate another human being for the color of their skins. That's not something that's unique to any particular party. It's a societal issue. It's a global issue. What we've got to do is fight hard at building a reconciled society. That's why our politics at the moment become very dangerous. When you have parties, on one end, you get a party that says, we only represent white people. That's wrong. When you, on another end, you get a party that says, we only represent black people. That's dangerous. It's yeah. played society. We are the party that's standing up saying, let's stand for all South Africans. And the beauty about Saturday, the beauty about what is going on in our society, is that, in fact, we can bring all of those people together to stand together for this vision of a non-racial South Africa, South Africa for all. President Cyril Ramaphosa famously said in the State of the Nation address uh, that uh, there's going to be a song between you and the EFF. <laughs> uh, predictions that there's going to be coalition uh, politics after the elections. You have already had the chance to work with the yeah. economic freedom fighters at uh, a local level. Yeah. That relationship doesn't seem to be moving to the next level. What are the challenges in that relationship? Co coalitions in and of themselves are hard work. Make no mistake about that. Um, but ultimately, they're still the future of South Africa. What's been important is that we've been able to get in the ring, argue about things, but emerge out of there with Give budgets. us a sense of those arguments. Look, we've got a debate. Obviously, the EFF's ideology is not something that DA shares. That's why we're not in a formal coalition with them. They want to nationalize. You made it clear on Saturday in terms of land? Absolutely. They yeah. want to nationalize land ownership. We want citizens to own land in their own right. And it's the same for the ANC. They want to nationalize the Reserve Bank. We think the independence of the Reserve Bank is key. So there's all of these contrasts. What needs to happen here in South Africa is that the parties that we've worked with also, who have agreed, Congress of the People, the Freedom Front Plus, the, um, all the other ones, we seem to have found a place where we say, can we put citizens at the center of it? So my view on coalitions is this, is that let's build a constitution. Let's agree that the constitution of South Africa is important. Do you agree that coalition politics are going to be taking center stage after this Absolutely. election? Absolutely. They're the future of our country. They are the future of our country. One party dominance is dangerous for South Africa. One party dominance is what gives you state capture. That's what one party dominance does. What you want is a coalition that is based on principle, that says constitutionalism, non-racialism, a market-based economy, a capable state, and an eradication of corruption. We agree on that plan, we can go forward. Now I'll work with anyone who agrees with that. In the meantime, let's build a strong DA so that we can be able to dictate the negotiations going forward. You say you want to create uh, a situation where in every household, at least one person has a job. Absolutely. Absolutely. How do you hope to bring that about? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's difficult to live in a home without a job. 
We want a job in every home. And the way we put it out is the fact that 40% of our households in South Africa simply don't have an income in them. They depend either on remittances or they depend on grant income. It's hard when people don't have a job. So we're saying, let's assist in stimulating micro-enterprise. Let's focus on city-led economic growth so that small businesses can thrive. Let's ensure that key sectors of the economy can grow both in urban and rural. Because as I travel the beauty of our country, tourism is a key sector, agriculture is a key sector, manufacturing is going to be important if we can stabilize energy and give the appropriate tax incentives within that space. And then ultimately, we want to introduce a national civilian program where young people can spend a year where they're able to work will give them uh, an income during that year so that during that year they can learn the skills on six months of internships. Ultimately, over a long period of time, it's about ensuring that in every home, at least one person is working. I'm not saying it's the yeah. only person that must work, but at least one so that we can increase the opportunity for our households to have income coming into. When you speak about young people, you also mentioned 35-year-olds uh, possibly getting a grant. Is, is that... Uh, yeah, it's key. The limits it's, that you, you're looking at in terms of young people? This is about young people and it's about ensuring that uh, this National Civilian Year program is part of the program of intervention for young people to be able to come on board. We are of the complete view that uh, youth unemployment in our country is the highest in the world. And, uh, and if we don't attend to that particular issue, it will, it will forsake a generation. Because when young people are unemployed, they become further unemployable. Which Let's look at another question from uh, our viewers. Gucci Revolutionary Spoo says, uh, when are they going to balance the scale of top management in the party? I don't know if Musi understands that question because I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 I think, uh, <laughs> look, our, our job is always to build diverse places of work. And um, frankly, it's, a, it's an objective that we try and reach across all sectors. It's not just in the party, it's also across parliament it's also equally so i want young people at i want people at work to know i speak to a lot of young black professionals who say we've hit a ceiling here can you assist us and i understand that i understand the inequality of our past what i want is diverse places of work and i want more people to be able to come into places of work so that our boardrooms are looking more diverse so that our places of work are much more diverse and i will fight for those who are left out my job is to make sure south africa is a country for all citizens one south africa for all, yeah. that works to bring prosperity i want to suggest to my producers that perhaps we look at several questions at a go instead of one shall we do that let's take a look at another one now Okay, rural areas that don't have water, roads and jobs. How are you going to change the rural areas to be better places to live? Uh, Charles Chilwani from Bushbuck Ridge. Let's take a look at another one. All right, it seems that's it's being lined up it will come up any time soon sure. uh, as you said you'll be traveling throughout the country and there's somebody been, from bush park I, ridge here i have been i mean the first thing about rural communities is that we've got to give security of tenure we've got to make sure people can own land because part of the problem with investment or disinvestment in rural areas is because you become uncertain as to what happens to land ownership and that's why things like share equity schemes that allow farm workers and farm owners to be able to work together to be able to create the appropriate economic advancements secondly we We've got to stimulate agriculture because that's key to creating yeah. work. We furthermore need to ensure that in rural communities we develop the right infrastructure. Infrastructure backlogs in rural communities such as water and delivery of basic services has slowed down. You know conversations about rural areas always worry me. They're so disingenuous coming from politicians where it seems like they just want to grandstand all the time about the things that they project that they can do in rural areas and hardly anything ever happens. Well we've had in rural communities governments that have been led by the NC and frankly if you can appreciate you go to the trans guy you'll discover the collapse of the trans guy where the deer has come on board particularly in rural municipalities i can assure you in the spread of the western cape you can see the delivery of water you can deliver see the delivery of electricity you can see the delivery of road infrastructure we don't talk about these things we yeah. do in comparison you must compare dear governments with any other government you'll discover very quickly no money is stolen and delivery actually takes place you like to talk about the kind of visible achievements that uh, yeah. where areas er, in areas where the DA has been uh, given the chance to be in government. Yeah. What are the challenges in terms of taking the anti up? Look, 
Governance is a, is a tough job, and we've got to ensure constantly that uh, we are delivering for people. But uh, if I give you just some basic stats, even here in Joburg, 6,000 titles, title deeds have been issued to people. When I look at the city of Chuane, already infrastructure development, we inherited a municipality that was 2 billion rands in the red. Now that municipality is showing a profitable municipality that delivers for more people. We ensure that we, ro we resurfaced all the road infrastructure in the Western Cape within the budget without trying to introduce tolls. That's why we think here in Gauteng we don't need e-tolls, rather what we need is a government that will take all of its resources to road infrastructure that we can build on place. Where the government, where in the latest quarterly labor force survey, 100,000 jobs have been created in the city of Johannesburg since the DA has come on board. So these are deliberate interventions that we focus. If you're not committed to stealing people's money and focused on the people, you can ensure you deliver for citizens. Some polls predict that the ANC will be getting a bigger chunk of this election yet again. Is that the DA's projection? And if it is, where do you see a role being? Far from. I, I don't think the ANC will get a commanding uh, majority as what uh, people like to, to read out there. I think, I think it's, a, it's a bit of an, an anomaly for me. Why would we ask a party that has looted for five years to fix the mess it created as if we should just sit back and almost take the abuse that the ANC is telling us? The liberators have become people who are stealing from our people. And that must concern all of us as citizens. So I think another five years isn't going to bring in a new change. The NC has proven its character. Yeah. That's what it is. What's important is that even our own internal polling is showing that the DA is in fact growing and the NC is in decline. What's going to be important is that you can put a new driver in President Ramaphosa, but the bus remains the same and it's a broken down bus and it's a bus that's not going to take South Africa to economic prosperity. There has been talk about the DA being broken itself, but let's look at that when we get back. You're watching the agenda. We're talking to the leader of the Democratic Alliance, Musi Maimani, and we have two questions that we want to look at from our viewers. Let's look at those right now. Please bring them up on the screen. Renaissance Man says, does the DA have a stance on transforming the racially skewed patterns of ownership in the economy? Uh, Right, and uh, Benny Tabiso, what would happen to you if you lose <laughs> this coming election? Racially skewed economic... Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, a, it's a concern. Uh, but what's important is that we've got to break down monopolies. Our fundamental issue is that the more we can stimulate new industries, new companies that in the main are black owned and so the plan is we must create a jobs and justice fund ask people to contribute to it the old model that they what are those new industries that you're talking about well here's that's key so if we even look at diversification of even the banking sector that's got to include new banks that are coming on board that are owned by south africans who are historically uh, disadvantaged when we look at mining when was the last time we sunk a new mine in south africa that is owned by black south africans so to achieve that objective is about creating a job and justice fund that will be able to do that so that it can stimulate that economic growth in that space equally so it's about ensuring that shareholding patterns in places of work is no longer reduced to politically connected people but those who work in a mine for example must own the shares in the mine because that's about ensuring that ownership patterns are being transitioned yeah. and ultimately when you look at the new students who are studying mining these are majority black South Africans so we set up a jobs and justice fund that might be able to give them an opportunity to get a foot in the door of that particular industry and in other industries so if you look at the insurance industry as an example let's create a fund so that new insurance companies can come on board led by legitimate black business you don't want politicians who become businessmen overnight because they arrive at a tender adjudication meeting and get tenders what you want is for people who are running legitimate businesses to be able to get the appropriate funding and be able to come on board to diversify the industry is about growing the industry it's about ensuring that there are new entrants that are coming on board so that we can increase the participation of black South Africans and other South Africans into the economy. It will be the vibrant economy that is diverse going forward. Let's talk about the perception that uh, um, you are running a solo ship in the DA. You don't have support, uh, especially with uh, Patricia DeLille now having left the party. Um, what, what is happening within the DA? Are you, are you confident of your federal uh, uh, council, their strength in supporting you in this, in going into this election? It's, it's one matter that is a figment of people's imagination, Dr. Because frankly, I, uh, the DA just held its Congress in 2018, got an overwhelming mandate, had no opposition. 
And I think the next Congress of the DA is in three years' time, and I'm certain that we'll have a commanding uh, support. Leaders are standing with us. We don't take anything for granted. We're focused on the elections. We're growing the organization. And ultimately, I have no doubt that uh, in any organization, there may be a few people here and there who disagree with you, but that's part of change. If you want to change an organization, not everybody is going to enter that immediately, quickly. We're trying to grow the organization. We're trying to achieve a level where the DA reflects even in more communities and governs in more places. So an organization that is growing is going to have some of these growth pains. But without doubt, I, I, I'm not even worried about that matter because I think the organization recognizes the vision and is working cohesively towards achieving that vision. If the party was in trouble, you would never have seen a manifesto launch that looked like this weekend. The, the new mayor of Tswane today is going to be outlining uh, the results of the report on Atlet Africa and that uh, uh, contract that eventually got uh, Mr. Msimang, uh, although he has stated different reasons for leaving, but uh, sentiment is that he left because of, of that contract. What? Once again, let's not deal with sentiment, let's deal with facts. The Auditor General has come out to say that that, that contract was, was badly adjudicated. In fact, that uh, it puts accountability at the chief accounting officer who is the city manager. Therefore, ultimately, we've got to deal with that. We are serious in government. We don't deal with contracts that are corrupt. We don't deal with people who are corrupt. We don't, we just simply, we take deliberate action. And so what's going to happen is that laying out the fact that that contract was poorly adjudicated, it will be rescinded so that we can actually follow the due process so that we can effectively deliver on that basis. It's got nothing to do with Solim Simanga. I wanted Solim Simanga to focus on the province of Gauteng and campaign. So there. the DA and goes he into the this. right thing by dealing with that contract. So the DA goes into this election completely 100% confident that Solim Simang is their man and you were you've been saying that you're going to take over Gauteng. Absolutely. We're, absu um, we're the party that's shown that where we govern actually things happen and Gauteng can do with delivery. I'm a citizen of this province and I would really want this province to be able to be a place where work is created, where in fact safety is prioritized, that we can ultimately make sure we deliver services in a much more accelerated way. That one day life as it many would never happen in a province like Gauteng and that's why it's key that Solim Sumanga becomes premier in this problem. Gauteng is considered the economic hub of the country and uh, there has been issues in terms of uh, policy direction within the Democratic Alliance in terms of uh, broad-based black economic empowerment. How do you hope to run this economy if you get the bag? Let me just say a few things. Firstly, uh, Triple BWE is an ANC model of redress. Redress is a pillar of the DA. Fairness is a pillar of the DA. Just because I'm critical of how the ANC does its thing does not mean I support economic inclusion. But do you have a plan? But there is a plan, and that's what I want to lay out. When you look at the economy of Gauteng, you must remember that cities play a crucial role in that. And what we want to do is stimulate micro-enterprise. Gauteng has a great opportunity in terms of manufacturing, so how can we give the appropriate tax incentives so that more goods are being made here that can be exported to other parts? We can use the agricultural sector as a key opportunity here to develop not only jobs and be able to ensure that there's an export market that comes from here. We have a plan that ensures that uh, if national government was to hear us, how do we ensure that we break down certain labor regulations so that people can opt in and out of it so that people can choose to say... You've actually said on Saturday that you want to create a system where it will be easy to fire people. No, I said on Saturday that we must uh, take out labor regulation that makes it difficult for people to get on to the economy. So let me give you a practical example. Minimum wage is a great idea except our minimum wage at the moment is set at 80% of the median wage. Treasury the ANC's treasury says 700,000 people will be fired as a result of this. What I'm saying is let's allow young people to be able to opt in and out of it. So they can make a choice to say, I will choose not to... I will choose to opt out of this policy so that I can get a job and be employed. So the plan here is about ensuring that more people get into work. The South African government and the ANC has represented the rights of those who are on the inside. I'm here to fight for those who are on the outside. What about those people who are not working? Who's the, speaking for the them? The kind of system you're touting is being discussed globally in terms of new ways of employing people. How applicable is it for South Africa? It's crucial. It's crucial. South Africa must, we must get on to the future. We must become 
uh, we can leapfrog the industrial era where we made people just simply come and work in factories in a conveyor belt. We can create an innovative hub where people are future focused. And therefore, labor regulation is going to have to change whether we like it or not. We're going to have to create labor, uh, labor of the future. And therefore, I think South Africa has a great opportunity. This is about being future focused. It's not about developing a vision for 1994. All right. It's a vision for 2019. We asked our viewers uh, that the major parties have released their manifestos. Who are you voting for? But also we asked you to talk to us in terms of, to interact with us in terms of this conversation we're having with uh, DA leader Musi Maimani. What is your position on sport transformation? That's an interesting one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, maybe especially in relation to, to the conversation about Kasta now. Ngosi says, what plan do you have to control porous borders and what adverse effects does this have in the country's economic growth? Let's take a look at another one. What does he think of expropriation of land without compensation? I think he has made that sure. particular one clear. I, I mean, starting with the first one, the transformation of sport is a function of development of sport. Today, we don't have a pipeline of talent that's coming through. We want young people from everywhere to be able to come through. By the way, I don't think we need a ministry of sport. I think that is a waste of money. Let's merge it with education. That's my part of my plan of minimizing yeah. government so that we can ensure that there's an effective development of young people coming through. That will give us the best cricketers, soccer players, and all of the aspects of rugby players that will be diverse in South Africa. The space this involves enough passion already. You can count on the people who are entrepreneurial within that space to yeah. move it forward. Absolutely. Without, uh, without a cumbersome it. bureaucracy and all of that, I think just as long as we create a talent pipeline, even amongst our education sectors, we'll be able to achieve a transformed sporting sector. But the issue of porous borders is absolutely vital. Remember South Africa at the moment in time. We in fact, before you finish your answer, I was listening to somebody the other day saying the DA is the only party that actually opened talks about this this conversation undeniably you you cannot simply I travel all over the world I've traveled in Africa no African country simply says to you, you can come in and out without any adjudication my call is to say let's make sure those who want to come into South Africa legally can do so we can give them legal certainty we can give people an adjudication on all statuses refugee status asylum seeking citizenship all of that you don't must think be that's happening already it isn't happening it is not happening I've been to different borders in South Africa. You can walk in and out. We don't know what the certainty is. You know, we bought two vehicles, uh, vehicles for police in Nelson Mandela Bay. They were stolen. They end up in Namibia because our borders are simply just porous. We've got to make it possible. And then those who want to come into South Africa illegally simply cannot come in. So we've got to be effective at borders. We've traveled all across. Remember, our South African National Defense Force is tasked with the duty of protecting our borders. The average age of an, of an army officer today is 42. When you speak to the generals in the army, they will tell you they have no equipment, no facilities to defend our borders. So when a person has come in legally and you've clarified their status, how do you determine how much portion of the economy, of the health services, do you give them? No, once, uh, once you're in the country, we can protect your rights. We can be able to give access to facilities. At this point in time, we don't know. We simply don't have an idea. So let me give you a practical example. If you go to Te uh, Tembisa, not far from here, uh, all of the children who are born there, who give birth there, six out of ten of them are non-South African citizens. We don't know who those, who, those, who those individuals are. And what I'm saying is with a proper registration management, we can ensure that those citizens are well looked after and that their rights are protected. As it, it always begins happens. at the border. We've got to ensure that our borders are secure. As it always happens with television conversations, we then uh, are tied by time. Yeah. Uh, Musi Maimane is the leader of the Democratic Alliance. What's your overall message in terms of the lead up to the elections in May? Let's build one South Africa for all. Let's ensure there's a job in every home. Let's ensure that we have an honest and a professional police service that can make sure our citizens are safe. Let's accelerate the delivery of basic services, uh, especially in key areas like health and education. Let's eradicate corruption by making sure politicians who are corrupt get 15 years in jail. And finally, let's make sure that we secure our borders. This is a South Africa for all. We can make this nation an incredible one that can compete with anyone else in the world. Well, there you have it. Those are his thoughts, Musi Maimani. What do you think? Are you going to vote for him? Let us know. Let's continue the conversation at the agenda underscore. SABC, you're watching the agenda. Let's take a break. We'll be back in a moment.